Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of sad individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Hello and welcome to the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog. I'm your host, Joaquin Watai. I'm beginning this show in order to continue to spread the word about PTSD service dogs, service dogs in general, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and just various aspects of service dog life. How do you deal with the adversity that can occur when somebody objects to the presence of your service dog? Focus on your dog. A service dog cannot be a protector. Many handlers don't know what they can't do. The Service Dog Show with PTS Dog right here on WDVR DV Radio. Hello and welcome to the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog. I'm your host, Joaquin Watai. I'm joined here today by Aaron and Stephanie Voris and Leah Patterson, all of whom were involved in an incident that ended up in the news but was grossly misrepresented. Before we get started, I need to talk a little about what you're listening to. DV Radio, WDVR. DV Radio is for veterans by veterans, and you can listen to veteran-produced shows right here, such as the Struggle Brothers Show, Mondays at 8 p.m. That's DV Radio, WDVR. All right, so on uh, June 21st, a story was posted on a Nashville area website, uh, WSMV.com. Uh, and the, and the headline is service dog kicked out of Nashville pub. I'm not going to call out the name of the reporter, but I am going to say that she was very, uh, misinformed about the ADA. And the bent of this article is, uh, well, it's pretty negative towards Stephanie and Aaron Voris and Aaron's service dog, Harvey. Originally, when I read this article, the way it is written, it had all the hallmarks of somebody trying to fake their way in with a pet. That is definitely not the case. Is it Aaron and Stephanie? No, no. Um, and Harvey has actually been... You know, certified was it like almost four years now as a service dog. Mm-hmm. Now, let's make clear: certification is not required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. However, the organization that you worked with to train Harvey, which is Tadsaw, does certify that you went through the course and did all of the training. Also in the show today is Leah Patterson, who is Harvey's trainer from Tadsaw. Leah, thank you for coming and joining us. No problem. Thank you for having us. So, Stephanie and Aaron, I'd like to hear the story in your words, please. All right. I'll, I'll let Aaron start. And I'll fill in. All right. Um, so what had happened is we, uh, we had to go to Nashville for one of my doctor's appointments. And, you know, ironically, it was, you know, for uh, neurology. Mm-hmm. Uh, June 7th. But after all that was finished, um, we decided we wanted to go to uh, McNamara's. To- right. Oh, I wasn't sure if we could say the restaurant name. I apologize. Oh, it's fine. It's out there in the news. Let's throw them under the bus. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Aaron. Sorry, I apologize. I apologize. We went to uh, McNamara's, you know, to get to get some food, and um, like the moment we actually stepped in, he. He came out of nowhere from behind me, um, and he asked if Harvey was a service dog, and I said yes. And then he asked, um, you know, what specific task does he do? And I told him um, he helps me with walking, and he helps me with uh, he assists with cognitive disabilities, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that's that's. When he said, uh, you know, they don't, uh, the ADA does not recognize, uh, you know, cognitive disabilities as disabilities or, or like that. Um, but 
you know, it was funny that while he kept repeating that same thing, he, uh, he said, you know, I've spoken to people, but he wouldn't say the people that he spoke to. And uh, um, after he just kept saying the same thing, um, you know, you know, Stephanie was uh, uh, Stephanie was getting annoyed, and by that time, you know, I was getting annoyed. So I pretty much just told you know uh, Stephanie, and, and you know, a lot, a lot less of nice, nicer words to uh, let's, let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much what happened. Um, we got in the car, and uh, that's when she called. Uh, the ADA. Yeah, that's when she called the ADA, and they uh, told her to seek an attorney. Mm-hmm. Can I fill in some blanks? Absolutely. And to start uh, with, let's ex- explain a little. Aaron's uh, disability, he's suffered from four traumatic brain in- injuries. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. And believe me, I understand it can be very difficult to put thoughts together. Um, so take your time. It's not gonna, it's not gonna bother anybody listening. We want to hear what your story is. But go ahead, Stephanie, and, and describe the situation. So essentially, as Aaron stated, uh, we had walked in the door and he literally uh, came out of nowhere. Uh, we were not even permitted to approach the estate. He kept us about 10 feet back from, but this is body language and where he stopped. And he asked the questions, and Aaron answered them. And that was when he said that the ADA did not recognize cognitive disabilities for service animals and for a task. And so Aaron explained, no, he assists me with my cognitive disability because... And Aaron does not need to be telling anyone his disabilities. That's against the ADA. But Aaron was just trying to be kind and educate the guy. and said, this is what he does. Mm -hmm. I have balance issues. Because of my PBI. I also have... Sorry, I'm upset. That's okay. Understandably. He said, I I also have no... You know, he he lacks peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. Man, I I cannot see outside of my peripheral. And so he helps me with balance, and he helps alert me to people around me. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm sorry, but the ADA does not recognize cognitive disabilities. This circle was just this circle. And so I got angry. And I said, listen, he has four TBIs. He is a service dog that, that assists him with his TBI disabilities. He would not, not listen. And so I, I did offer up. I did. I said, look, I have paperwork to show that, Har- that Harvey is here because of his ability. And I know that paperwork is not, you know, we don't have to give anything, nor do we have to have a vest. We don't have to have a vest on the dog. I know what Harvey, you know, what it is. I just wanted the man to recognize my husband's disabilities. And yes. so I recognized that I, I, I went overboard and I did something that the service dog community is pretty upset with me for. I would have never done that. This has been three years and we've never had anyone like this. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I did I did do something that I, you know, shouldn't have done. It's not illegal, but I shouldn't have done it. And I apologize to the service dog community, but just please understand, I was trying to validate my husband's disabilities. Now, first of all, I'm going to tell you, as one of the people who, reading the story, said, holy cow, they offered paperwork, I'm going to apologize to you, okay? One of the, you, as you know, one of the hallmarks of the people who fake it is they go online and they order certi- certification or ID cards or registry, and there are all these sites out there that sell these things, and the ADA is very clear that that's not necessary. So when a news story says proffered, you know, certification, red flags automatically go off. But that goes back to the issue with the press and their um, really poor abilities to reflect the actualities of the ADA. I've seen very few articles um, dealing with this kind of a denial of service, denial of access uh, event that reflect the ADA accurately in any way, shape, or form. Um, Especially around the whole airlines issue and the emotional support animals and all the stuff going on with Delta right now. About 90% of the articles completely miss the actual laws. So, um, 
as a as a trained journalist, that's what I did in the military. I have to apologize on behalf of the press because man, they screw it up regularly, and it hurts veterans. And this is exactly a, you know a case in point where where a veteran was unjustly challenged. The guy thought he knew more than the, than the actual service dog handler, and instead of listening to the disabled person, he decided to kick you out. And that's horrible. And I really, really feel for you. I've had these kind of challenges before, never publicly in a restaurant to that degree. Um, but uh, what a terrible, terrible situation. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I want to talk about the media. I want to talk about how we can make education better for these reporters. Um, one of the most useful tools we have is the ADA's Service Animal Q&A. I mean, if a reporter would take 10 minutes to sit down and read this, it's available at ada.gov slash regs2010 slash service underscore animal underscore QA dot HTML. It's it's easy. Google serv ADA Service Animal Q and A. It pops up. There are apps that you can carry around on your phone. ADA Pause is one that pops up the regulation immediately. It pops up the the Q and A. Um, these are such simple tools, but the, but the media is all about sensationalizing this with 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 the airline stuff going on with the 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 fake service dog problem. You know, at the grocery stores and things. They jump immediately to, you know, this guy brought in this dog and blah, blah, blah. Instead of looking at the truth of the situation, looking at the facts. Um, Aaron, in general, when somebody comes and you're trying to enter a store, in general, when they ask you the questions, how do you respond? What questions are you, uh, are you talking is, about? Is that a service dog required because of a disability? Yeah, well... <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, they asked those questions, and I said, yes, he's a service dog. Mm -hmm. And usually, that's, that's it. Okay. So when I ask, yeah. what tasks is he trained to perform? Um, I usually, you know, what I tell them is he assists me with walking and, um, you know, cognitive disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and I say cognitive disabilities because I have multiple mm -hmm. um, disabilities that have to do with cognition. Mm -hmm. I didn't do the TBI. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, you know, it's it's more like I just don't want to stand there and have to name off every Well, you, you know, and you you absolutely do not have to sit there yeah. and give them a laundry list of your disabilities. The, the ADA is very clear about that. They're not allowed to ask you. Right. That's correct. You know, they need to if, if if me as a store owner comes to you and says, is that a service dog? You say yes, and you and I ask what tasks, and you say, well, it helps me with balance and walking. That's it. That, that, defines, that defines it under the ADA right there. Now, of course, yeah. Harvey is your service dog. During all of this, I'm certain Harvey was perfectly well-behaved. Yes. And and that's, yeah, that, I, I mean, guess, go ahead. We, uh, you know, we we get uh, asked all the time, like you know, um, about his training because of his behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people they're just like, you know, I can't believe that you know the dog is behaving that well. Mm -hmm. I've even had people you know tell me like your dog behaves better than my children. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to Leah Patterson, who is the Tad Saw trainer who trained Aaron and Harvey together. And um, Leah, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the challenges you worked through with Aaron in training Harvey. Well, um, I'll start with Harvey is one of the most mellow husky mixes I've ever met. He is really well behaved and sweet and really loves Aaron. Aaron is his person and he's willing to do anything for him. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started with them and when I start with all of my veterans, the first task they learn is medication. 
Mm -hmm. So to remind the veteran to take their medication daily at a certain specific time. Mm -hmm. That is considered a task by the ADA. And it's the first one I teach all of my PTSD dogs because every single one of my veterans takes at least one pill a day, if Mm -hmm. not even more than that. Mm -hmm. Or they have emergency medication for when they have panic attacks. The dog learns to bring them that medication during those periods. Um, Harvey was, from the beginning, he he took to training perfectly. He learned all of his basics. And I think three or four weeks, he had watched me leave it, sit down, stay, calm, heal, and loose leash walking. Um, And he learned a couple tasks, like the medication and uh, checking around the corner to make sure no one's coming when he's walking through Walmart, so he didn't have somebody run into him right as he's walking by an aisle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harvey will check the aisles and do a block to stop him if somebody is coming, or he'll return back to a heel and continue walking by. And again, uh, that is that is because Aaron has trouble with peripheral vision due to his injuries. Yes, and, and some of my veterans, if they have real bad startle effects where somebody comes out of nowhere, then we will teach the dog to check the aisles for them. Mm -hmm. So they walk with, they're still at a heel, but their rear end is where the leg is to the veteran. Mm -hmm. And the dog will check the aisle and then return back to a heel or check the aisle, and if somebody's coming, they block. Mm -hmm. Uh, It kind of lets the veteran know that there's somebody coming down that aisle and you're about to run face-to-face into somebody, you know. Perfect. Perfect. (laughs) Excuse me. But, um... I don't know if they want me telling you the disability, but <laughs> we spoke about it just before we connected with you. And Aaron had some seizures when we first started, and Harvey picked up on his seizures right away. And uh, quite a few of my veterans do have epilepsy, and that's one of the biggest ones that they learn the quickest is to pick up when the veteran's about to have a seizure. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll do a block and... and Make sure they get to a secure spot, whether it's on the floor or to a chair. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's Harvey fantastic. Was great, but Eric has been doing really well and hasn't had a seizure in a few years, so he didn't even think to say he's my seizure alert dog, which again would have stopped the restaurant from pursuing anymore. Mm-hmm. We're kind of like saying PTSD or a seizure alert dog, I mean, you're still giving away your medical disability, which is really none of anybody's business. But at the same time, because we do have so many dogs that people are just wanting to take their dog in public with them, Mm -hmm. um, you have to have people that ask questions. They just need to go about it a different way. You know, they need to be trained in how to approach these people because, um, you know, as with PTSD, it can send you into a rampage that you just can't come back out of. Right. Um, I was telling Aaron and Stephanie about one of my other veterans who winded up dropping out of the program because of the first confrontation he had. It, it was a bad, bad confrontation in the middle of the mall. And it took me months to get this man to walk into the mall. Mm-hmm. He, just to be able to walk through the doors, we trained outside just to get him comfortable with it before I ever got him to go in the doors. And we trained for six to eight months at the mall before I was ready to accredit their dog. Mm-hmm. And he was waiting for me to come back and do our public access temperament test. And uh, he was approached by security stating that the housekeeper said he was blocking the doorway. And by the time I got back there, I'm like, where the heck did he go? He was out in the car in a full-blown rampage. Mm-hmm. Punched the steering wheel screaming and yelling, and by the time I got out there, I had to calm him back down, and then I had to go into the mall to figure out what happened with that situation, you know. And it turned out to be a big misunderstanding. They actually fired the housekeeper over it because it wasn't even him who was blocking the door, Mm -hmm. supposedly. It was me and a female veteran that we were sticking in front of the bathroom as the guy was coming through, and I said, oh, watch out, and we moved to the side. But he had called security and said that we had blocked the door. You know, we do run into issues like this where we do have some confrontations and some of the veterans drop out of the program because they can't handle those confrontations with explaining what their dog does and and, uh, when they get told they have to leave or move out of the way or something like that. 
So it's something we try to do with the veteran also is to teach them how to handle those situations and make sure that they don't get asked more than those two questions mm-hmm. and how to answer those questions properly. Yes, most absolutely. Of the, most of the time I tell my veterans, you know, say it's my medical alert service dog. He's trained many different tasks to assist me with my medical disability. Mm-hmm. And that's enough to, to let them go because they shouldn't have to say, oh, you know, he, he gets my medicine for me. He turns on the light, wakes me up during a nightmare. He lets me know when somebody's walking up behind me, which is the basic task that I, I train all of my PTSD service dogs. Mm-hmm. They may learn other ones than like my TBI veterans. I have several veterans who can't find their car in a crowded parking lot. We teach the dogs to find the car. Mm-hmm. One veteran, after three hours of walking around the Opryland Mall parking lot, he called me and he says, I can't find my car. we got to train Kaiser to find my car. And I told him, I said, grab the handle of the leash and say, Kaiser, let's go home. And Kaiser walked him all the way through that parking lot and stopped at his truck. Wow. You wow. know, it, trusting in the dog and that you guys do have a good connection and and then we trained from there. And after that, we started teaching Kaiser. Let's go home means take him out of the building and straight to the vehicle. Mm-hmm. And it didn't matter if we exited another door or not. Kaiser would always find the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Like each dog has to be trained. Uh, I'm, I'm a little particular. Like, okay, I want at least three tasks with each of my service dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do get some people that are like, well, they just make me feel good being there. Well, that's not a task. We have to teach them something that actually helps you and is considered a task for everyday life. Mm-hmm. Comforting is not a task. So we right. always tell them to ever use comfort as a task. You know, it's, it's the other things that they're trained to do, like alert you to somebody coming up behind you or coming down the aisle around the corner um, or your medications, because every single one of them takes medications. The dog, that's the first task they learn is to remind them to take that medicine every single day at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's that's fantastic. Thank you, Leah. You're listening to the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog. I'm your host, Joaquin Watai. I'm here with Aaron and Stephanie Forrest and Leah Patterson. We're talking about an incident they had in Nashville recently being refused service at a restaurant. We will be right back after this break on WDVR. Radio. You've been hearing from me about my book for the past two years on DV Radio. Now you can order a copy of PTS Dog, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, and The Service Dog. Check it out on BookLocker.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Amazon.com. If you choose to purchase the book on Amazon, please consider using Smile.Amazon.com and picking the DV Farm as your charity of choice. Buy your copy of PTS Dog, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, and The Service Dog today, only at BookLocker.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Amazon.com. Ever shop online at smile.amazon.com? Why not give back to the DV Farm by making it your charity of choice? No extra fees or hidden costs, and a portion of your purchase goes directly towards the DV Farm, located in Gilson, New Hampshire, and helping to continue its mission. That's smile.amazon.com, and be sure DV Farm is your charity of choice. For more information about the DV Farm, please go to dvfarm.org. Can I get stickers, 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 stickers? Yep. I got to get over your country to get over your country to get over here a t-shirt. And one with a t-shirt, yep. we get to make any kind of crazy basket t-shirt. Yep. Now I got a mug, 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 TV mugs, I got mugs. Let me hear TV farm coins with TV coins. TV farm coins with TV coins. Gone once, gone twice. Sold my TV store, I got Let's get it on. We've got some food bread made for you. The music. Go! You're listening to WTVR on DVRadio.net. Five veterans, four veterans. Simply made for you. Welcome back to the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing the book, it is available now at booklocker.com slash books slash 9895 dot html. 
That's the book PTS Dog, Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, and the Service Dog, available now at booklocker.com. You can also find it at Barnes & Noble and on Amazon.com. We're here once again with Aaron and Stephanie Voris and Tadsaw trainer Leah Patterson. And I'd like to talk a bit about how life has changed for you and Stephanie, Aaron. Um, you've suffered some very serious injuries, four traumatic brain injuries. It's obviously had some very det detrimental effects on your health. How were things before you started to work with Leah and train Harvey? Um, well, we didn't exactly know what was going on you know, with me. I mean, my injuries were still fresh and the VA was still trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and I mean, uh, um, you know, I would, uh, be in like extreme amounts of pain like, all the time. Like from when I woke up, when I go to bed. And so I got really heavy into alcohol. Um, and, and I almost lost, uh, my marriage and everything. Um, but, uh, you know, so, uh, like we were saying, uh, um, you know, when I would have like seizure attacks, you know, I would black out completely. And, um, you know, as soon like the police knew, you know, Stephanie by name. And as soon as, you know, she called like seven, seven police officers would be immediately at the door. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was because, you know, once I got the, uh, you know, when I would black out, I would do, you know, what I was doing when I got the injuries and, you know, the last thing I was doing, I was in a firefight. So I'd become very, very hostile. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, uh, you know, then, um, I would also get, you know, lost in places very, very easily. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't remember, um, you know, where the car was parked. I, I couldn't remember a lot. And, um, uh, if you got Harvey, um, uh, all of that changed. Uh, uh, you know, he can sense when I'm, uh, you know, about to, you know, when I'm about to black, black out and he'll pull me away from the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, me and Stephanie have actually, you know, gone hiking, you know, in, in, uh, what was it at? Burgess Falls? Um, in a place called Bur Burgess Falls, uh, you know, we went a pretty good ways in there, probably about like two and a half, maybe three miles in. And, um, you know, I took Harvey off the leash and he would lead it back to the Jeep, you know, if that said thing mm -hmm. so it's been a uh my quality of life with harvey and uh, with my wife has been in like a, a, a major major change stephanie um, yes what would you from your perspective can you give me a little before and after i can um we met leah and started training with harvey around the same time that aaron's fugue state were at the worst um you know yes he he did have seizures which were different obviously than a few state and and you know so of course harvey was being trained to help with those seizures but uh the fugue states are certainly more as you know ptsd related mm -hmm. according at least to what va researchers know right now um but my husband you know he he went through a year of veterans treatment court and because of a, a blackout with PTSD and there was there was no alcohol. Um but you know he he was being trained with Harvey and Harvey was by his side through veterans treatment court. He actually was pretty popular because he's cute, cute, but anyway, he's good. Um but Aaron has for the most part quit drinking. Um when I say for the most part, he actually quit drinking for two years. And then, you know, here lately has been like wanting to be able to have a beer with dinner to not be a weirdo, right? Mm -hmm. He's been doing very, very well. Um, and as far as Harvey keeps him calm, but I can tell you one situation where there was a, a young, a young man who was sneaking up behind us. We were in a mall 
Mm -hmm. And there was a young man sneaking up behind us, and he had no bad intentions. He, he wanted to pet the dog, but didn't bother to tell any of us he was coming our way, and would have scared Aaron to death. And Harvey luckily let out one bark, which is what he's been trained to do if someone gets within about five feet of us and we're not aware. And mm -hmm. so we turned, and the young man was scared, and he said, you know, we're so sorry that Harvey scared you, but you can't sneak up on us. And mm -hmm. so, so, you know, things like that that keep us from having really bad incidents, you know, a few states love them all, probably avoided that day because mm -hmm. Harvey was able to alert us to something to sneak behind. I don't think that people realize that in situations like that where you're unaware and the dog's alerts aren't working, if the dog has to escalate, one bark is an acceptable alert. It even says so in the ADA. That is not out of control. And people, yes. oh, well, your dog barked. Well, the dog was alert. No, nope, it was one. And it was, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, if the dog went crazy, no. that's a different no. story. But one bark to alert is not a big deal. Um, it is right. perfectly acceptable and according to the ADA. That to, mm -hmm. And we explained that to the yeah. young man. And he understood. But, you know, he had innocent intentions. People, mm -hmm. So many people are ignorant to the fact that Harvey's working. And so he, he's sneaking up, you know, like, oh, maybe I'll get a chance to pet this dog. And like I so said, when I say young man, I'm talking adolescent, okay? Yeah. You know, but he's still forming and learning. Yes, and, you know. A kid, yeah. To do something about it. Yeah. Um, but needless to say, you know, so we educated him that day. And that was really bad mm -hmm. Aaron and, how are you how uh, are you, you know, handle challenges how do you I mean uh, speaking from myself from a before and after uh, aspect the rage attacks the 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 panic the crippling panic attacks that I would have out in public I mean the, things things were so different than they are now um, how how do you see yourself growing and and recovering and know that you know i'm never going to be able to like, like turn that off but um you know with you know with harvey and you know stephanie there um i'm certainly more able to handle you know crowds i mean uh you know without harvey um you know i would wouldn't be able to go and you know i wouldn't be able to go into the mall because there's so many people there it reminded me of walking through a bazaar mm -hmm. you know, and during in that time uh you know we were in a pretty highly kinetic area so at any moment some you know one of the insurgents could you know fire at us and go around the corner and be right back into the bazaar again we wouldn't be able to see them so it's very very nerve-wracking to try to walk through people like mm -hmm. but you know uh, it got to the point where you know I mean, I'm not a very good judge of character to a person where you know I don't, I don't see the good in people anymore when someone comes my way I immediately look for a weapon mm -hmm. and you know having we have, uh, you know, developed uh, an understanding um, to the point to where, you know, when someone gets close to me, Harvey, I'm out. And then he will turn back to me and, and you know, let me know that this person is okay. You don't have to be, you know, hostile or getting ready, you know, to fight. Mm -hmm. And Aaron takes Aaron takes a college class um, here over at um, Cookville, and, and you know, we've not had any incidents of him getting lost on campus. He took a class back in Clarksville before he had Harvey, and the director ended up writing a letter to the VA on our behalf because he would approach Aaron and, and Aaron would literally lost in a, a, just the one building that was the, the campus there. We're not talking about Austin, it's the little community college. Mm -hmm. um, and it concerned him greatly. And he was a veteran too, so you know, he kind of he wanted to help. Um, um, and so now, you know, we've not had an incident with Aaron getting lost because he has someone who has been trained by Leah to help him get to that next location. So it's 
and it's just it's just been a lifesaver. I mean, there's there's no way that I could work. I could work now. I I was I had to be at home as a caregiver you know, before Harvey came along, and now I I'm then that I can work because Harvey is a make sure he takes his medication to you know to keep him keep him alert. Mm-hmm. It's helpful. Yeah. Now, Aaron, you touched on something, and I'm actually gonna. Uh, I'm going to address this question to Leah. Um, the bond that you've created with Harvey, that teamwork, that partnership, um, it's, that's a big uh, factor of my book is, is uh, um, trying, to, trying to really emphasize how important that bond is. Leah, as, as the trainer who helped work together with Aaron and Harvey, what does that bond between the dog and the handler mean? It definitely means everything. If we don't, if we don't see them really connecting after two or three weeks of training, then we say it may not be a good fit. Mm-hmm. Now, Harvey, they found before they came to me, and mm-hmm. I temperament tested them. Said, you know, I normally don't train huskies. Huskies aren't loyal. Blah blah blah. I've owned huskies, lots of them, and they're not that that great as being loyal dogs, you know, but Harvey took straight to the job and knew exactly Aaron was his person. You know, if I'm there with the treats and doing the training, he chose Aaron over me all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I want to see. I want to see a dog who doesn't care about somebody else offering food and things like that. They're looking to their owner on, should I listen to them? You know, which most of the time when I do training, it's, I show them a couple things on how to get the dog to sit or how to get them to lay down or do a cover, you know, and then I give them the treats and I have them work on it and they work on it for a week and then we come back and we do it something new. Right. And every week when Harvey would come back, I was just amazed at was how quick he was picking everything up and how attached to Aaron he was. It didn't matter if he was in a group of 10 other veterans with their dogs, Harvey chose Aaron every time. He mm-hmm. didn't choose to go mingle with the other dogs or socialize with all the people. It was always checking to see with Aaron if it was okay if he said hello to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely the, the way it's supposed to be. Aaron, I have uh, Skeeter, who is an Alaskan Malamute. So I'm very familiar with some of the challenges of training a snow dog. And um, it's pretty exciting that Harvey's such an accept, uh, exceptional, excuse me, Example of a of a husky, and you said he's a husky mix. Yes, husky yes. German Shepherd. Mix. Oh wow! So he's got some size to him. Yeah. 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 I tell you, our our four legged partners, um, people people scoff, but especially for veterans with PTSD, TBI, uh, hearing issues, that that dog becomes your battle buddy. It becomes your backup. He's got your six, and people don't realize how important that is. You don't have a guy, you know, in gear with with a rifle behind you, but you do have your dog, and you learn that the dog is more than capable of covering your back, and that's it's such a it's a life changing thing. It really is, and it's it's something I work so hard to try to get people to understand. Um, so I want to. I want to just kind of wrap up again why we're here and what we're talking about. Um, And then we'll talk about where we can find stories about you and Harvey. There have been a few. um, And I want to definitely share uh, with people a little bit about uh, just that you two have a history and um, that this incident was, was really, really inappropriate. So again, we're talking with Aaron and Stephanie Voris, who tried to go to a restaurant in Nashville, were refused service because the restaurant's manager decided he knew more about the ADA than the disabled veteran who's been using the service dog for four years now? Almost Almost four years now. And um, this is obviously very much a gross... uh, misinterpretation and misuse of the ADA by the manager. But then to kind of heap uh, insult onto injury, a news article was done about it that completely blew the story. 
and took the manager's side and quoted the ADA. The manager quoted the ADA, and it made it seem it made it seem like the manager had a good case. That's not the case. And and something that really you know, and I'm guilty too. I read the story. I did say when I posted about it that given the information that was available, it looked like the manager was right. But there really wasn't a lot when it, reading it. There wasn't a lot from you guys. The reporter totally took the took the manager's side. Didn't there? There was no. It, it was bad reporting. This was straight up bad reporting, and that misrepresentation in the media of legitimate dog handler teams, legitimate veterans who absolutely need their life saving medical device, their service dog. We've got to attack this. We have got to change the media's knowledge of the ADA so that we can influence the public's knowledge of the ADA. So tell me a little bit. I've seen a couple of the positive articles, Stephanie. You sent them to me. Um, tell me a little bit about those so those stories. In short, um, Harvey gives Aaron that comfort to be able to be around a crowd, and we mm -hmm. talked about that. Aaron was able to speak on behalf of Soldiers and Families Embrace in Clarksville, Tennessee, next to a state senator back in 2015. I believe that was the year. Forgive me, I'm going off of memory. And, you know, back in 2017, we had a great piece that was done here in Cookville by our Cookville City paper. It made the front page. And ironically, in that article, Aaron tells the person, the, the journalist, exactly what Aaron tells this restaurant owner a year later. The mm -hmm. dog helps me with walking. And he helps me with seeing mm -hmm. the same thing. And so clearly we have a record showing how to describe what the dog does for us. Um, the article was very positively um, written and, and spread to the community. Um, a lot of people know Harvey here, thank goodness for that. But I will admit, since this event has happened, I worry about people, you know, refusing us service again. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just been... It's been a nightmare, but back to Harvey, um, that incident, and since the positive article was written, there was actually a Harvey fund that has started here in the community by just a wonderful woman, a wonderful woman and she, um, she actually, she does therapy dogs, okay, something completely different yes. for cancer patients, and when she learned about service animals, she said, tell me more, tell me more, and then once I told her, she just fell in love with her. Harvey, she fell in love with Aaron, and so this Harvey Fund that's named after Harvey is for any veteran that goes to Tennessee Tech here in Cookville or Volunteer State here in Cookville and have a third dog. Mm -hmm. And medical bills will be paid, not, not the veteran, but the service dogs. Mm -hmm. Veterinary bills will be paid by this grant paid, you know, named after Harvey, so it's just really cool. Really That's cool. fantastic. Um, do you have Thank the you. Do you have a web address or, or a way to find the Harvey Fund? Um, I think I sent you the link to that, but let me let me pull it up real quick online. Yeah, remember we're recording for the radio show, so we have to share oh, that information. Right. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. Right. I love that the show is you know that you you're comfortable like we're just sitting with a cup of coffee and having a conversation. That's that's really what I want. I want comfortable conversations with my friends about living life with service dogs. So, um, I pulled it up. It is Harold. Is that a hyphen? I feel like I'm very ignorant right now. Harold-citizen.com forward slash stories forward slash Harvey dash fund dash established dash to dash help dash student dash veterans comma one eight four eight seven oh student veterans comma one eight seven one eight four eight seven and for those listening i'll make sure that this information is included in the podcast link um and uh easily uh findable stephanie 
Uh, in follow up, if you could make sure, uh, double check that you sent me those links to those stories so that we can get all this information Absolutely. out to people. That's really fantastic. Um, Leah, uh, Tad Sauce received a lot of blowback over this story, and it's very obvious that Harvey is a well trained service dog. Aaron and Stephanie were completely in the right. The story was taken way out of context. Um, in order to make the the restaurant manager look good. Um, So let's get some positive, correct information out about Tadsaw. Um, Tell me about the program. Um, Tadsaw is a nonprofit organization that started up in 2011, and we have almost 900 accredited teams now. Mm -hmm. And what does that accreditation mean? Uh, Okay, so... When when we get a veteran, if they have a dog of their own, we temperament test that dog. And if the dog meets the criteria, meaning that through threat tests and all other kinds of tests that we do, loud noises, um, what they tolerate, that they're friendly and social no matter what situation they're put in, mm-hmm. that they don't stress, become fearful, or aggressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we begin training with the veteran weekly to teach the dog basic obedience and to become well-behaved enough to start public access. They'll learn tasks with the veteran, depending on what the veteran needs. We have some standard tasks that we teach, but we also add more tasks for that veteran's specific needs. Mm -hmm. So not every veteran has seizures. If they need a seizure alert dog, then we we train the dog for seizure alert, um, which, as you know, is mostly a natural um, instinct right. is, is through the bond. They mm-hmm. pick up on something is not right, and we just have to modify it. I mm-hmm. had one dog that liked to jump up, and we had to teach him that wasn't appropriate, you know, to kind of jump up as a last resort if the veteran's not responding to the leg tap or um, the shove towards a, a chair or a door. I call, I call the jump up level three, and that's when I've lost it, and Skeeter's keeping me from doing something wrong. <laughs> yes. yes, and I do have to explain to my veterans, if you're missing their alerts, they're going to go to extremes, whether it's mm-hmm. a bark or jump up to let you know, you need to pay attention to me, I'm telling you something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but once they, once they complete all the basic and advanced obedience, we begin public access. Mm-hmm. So we'll start training at Walmart, the mall, Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that in different situations to get the dog to what we feel is standard training. So um, all of my dogs complete all of the AKC tests. So they take the AKC K9 Good Citizen test, the advanced AKC K9 Good Citizen test, the community K9, and the urban K9 test. Excellent. And Tadsaw also kind of combines those and comes up with the Tadsaw Public Access Temperament Test. Mm-hmm. So we test with elevators, stairs, crowds, small spaces, um, entering and exiting buildings, entering and exiting the car, uh, sitting politely for petting, uh, ignoring people that are trying to pet. Um, part of our test is I'll have my kids walk down the aisle and pet the dog while the dog is in either a sit or a down stay. Mm-hmm. And the dogs ignore those people walking by petting them and still paying attention to their veterans. Yes. And then we do a lot of group training. So uh, biggest thing I see with service dogs that are not properly trained is you walk in with another service dog and they're lunging and barking and whining and wanting to go play with that new dog that just came in the store. Mm-hmm. So we choose as a group a lot to teach our dogs to ignore other dogs. Right. And I hear comments a lot that a service dog distracted won't alert to a medical disability or they'll, they'll miss an alert. We don't have that issue because we train with lots and lots of distractions all the time. So um, we had an incident where we had 10 veterans together and, and one had a seizure and all 10 dogs stopped working. And started looking at that veteran like something is wrong. <laughs> and I, I told the veteran, take a seat, something's wrong. And I knew that that veteran had seizures and um, that when the dog's no longer following their commands, something is up. Mm-hmm. And 
I've learned to watch all my veterans, and after about two or three months of working with them, I get to know them pretty well, and I know their dogs pretty well, and I know when to tell them they need to take a break, that something's up. Yeah. Um, and shortly after all the dogs kind of started looking at her and whining and spinning circles on the leash, I was like, something is not right, and we're not paying attention to what's not right. Yeah. Uh, that friend actually fell over and had a, had a major seizure. Um, she actually had three in a row before she came out of it. Mm, dear. Um, but that's something I, I love to see is that all 10 of these dogs, like as soon as the veteran came out of the seizures and was fine, bam, right back to work with their veteran. Mm-hmm. That's what I see with my dogs is that no matter what is going on around them, they're picking up on it. And actually, while that veteran was having a seizure, it triggered a panic attack in one of the other veterans. And his dog no longer cared about the veteran having a seizure and went right back to his veteran. Yeah. Yeah. That shows that they can have distractions going on and still pick up on an alert with proper training. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, But I don't, I don't go by a specific time frame. Each veteran is different. Mm -hmm. I've had some veterans that complete the program in three months and I have some that I work with for two years. How it long really, did it take you, Aaron? I think it was, I think you were seven or eight months before you and her. Yes, that's yeah. it. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. But it sounds like you had a really good uh, foundation to build on with Harvey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And a big a big reason it took extra time was because the wife was in college and working and completely drive with the peripheral vision issues. So <laughs> blame the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you remember when you went to court and the judge told you that Harvey wasn't acting like a service dog? And so I went to your next court with you. And what it was was the court had Aaron so anxious. Mm -hmm. And I saw it from the moment he walked in the door. I was like, he is nervous and scared. He's in front of a judge. He's nervous. Yeah. Well, the judge had only seen seeing eye dogs. But, you know, seeing eye dogs don't do much. They lay behind their, mm-hmm. inside their hands and wait until they're ready to move. And then they, they do their thing. I mm-hmm. dog where Harvey was being a PTSD dog. He, he knew that Aaron was not okay. And he, he would jump up on Aaron and tell him, Hey, I'm right here. Pay attention, you know? Mm-hmm. And so the judge called me up to the front and actually asked me, um, the difference between a PTSD service dog and a seeing eye dog. And he said, you know, I just expected him to lay at his feet and not do anything, and I couldn't understand why he kept getting up. And I asked him, is that really a service dog? <laughs> well, his daughter happened to be in the courtroom and was writing up a paper about service dogs for veterans with PTSD. So he was like, I'm going to use this as an educational speech for my daughter so she can write her paper. <laughs> and it worked out really good. The judge was amazed with all the things that Harvey could do and understanding why Harvey was jumping up on Aaron. Aaron calmed down and Harvey mm-hmm. went to a down stay at his feet. And he yeah. said, that's amazing, you know, that he, he will go right back to being a completely obedient dog. It, once once the handler responds, yes. That's something, yeah. you know, people have said, why do you let your service dog do that? And I'm going to do what? Well, he just pushed you away. Yeah, he's alerting. You're making me, you know, you're making me nervous. He's doing his job. He doesn't want me to punch you. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> well, folks, thank you so much, all three of you, for joining me. It's good to get the, the true story, and I'll make sure that we get this true story out, both here in this radio show. I will also be publishing a piece on PTS Dog. Yes. Can I add one thing? Okay. Please. Just for just for those that are listening that, that aren't as up to date on the ADA as, as you and I, I just I, I wanted to point out that you look up any lawsuit from the government onto a restaurant, just in particular this was um voluntary compliance agreement between the, the USA and Mercy College. Mm-hmm. Which this was back in 20, 2016. But there is an exhibit. There's a form called Exhibit A. And I just want to let folks know that if you read Exhibit A and it, you read what a service animal does, it says doing work. And I won't read the whole paragraph, but it does say doing work or performing tasks for people with TI, et cetera. And then it even says with intellectual or cognitive disability 
locate misplaced items, etc. And so for him to say that cognitive disabilities are not covered by the ADA, he was wrong. Mm -hmm. He was wrong. He was wrong. Absolutely. (laughs) And you know what? I tell you, I feel for you. I have been refused access and had to file complaints. And I know this is difficult, um, challenging, but the outcome is that the next veteran who wants to go eat at that restaurant will be treated correctly. And that's the goal. That is absolutely the goal. Thank you both for your support with us. Thank you. Thank you. You betcha. And um, I'm just, I'm a hundred percent in your corner on this. I want to get the true story out there um, and kind of thumb my nose at the quote unquote media who threw you guys under the bus. They were wrong, and it was ugly, and I will correct my error in jumping on the bandwagon. You've been listening to the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog. My guests were Aaron and Stephanie Forrest and Leah Patterson. Uh, We talked about an incident uh, they had trying to go into a restaurant in Nashville, Tennessee, where they were refused service. Right here on DV Radio, WDVR. (laughs) 